Thanks, everyone. Uh, before um, I uh, open the questions, I wanted to provide a brief health update on uh, Heston Kerstad. Um, and that's that's uh, really the entirety of my opening uh, remarks. But um, so Heston was playing in a uh, prospect inter squad game uh, the last couple of games, last couple of days before Major League Camp officially started. Um, during that game, he dove for fly ball. He strained his left hamstring. Um, we were still working on, uh, at the time, um, ascertaining the severity of the strain. And after uh, doing all the diagnostic tests um, that we felt were necessary, um, we have determined that it's, a, I guess, to be called a higher grade hamstring strain um, will be a non-operative recovery. So simple rest, uh, rehab, and, and uh, return to form. Uh, but given that it's a hamstring and the degree of the strain um, be something that's probably in the eight to 12 week neighborhood before he's returning to game action. So um, obviously a horrible blow for a guy that was getting back up on his feet after a um, very unfortunate health situation that he uh, is looking like he's overcome. Um, terrible timing, uh, very unfortunate, but uh, it's a matter of time. And I think at this point, um, you know, his hamstring is going to bounce back and it's just a, a, a more pile on of uh, lost repetitions that we're going to have to worry about and try to make up for and do so as responsibly as possible. But he's doing well. It, it, it's improving on a day to day basis, which is a good sign. And our rehab team will map out a, a course to get him out to an affiliate, but um, he'll be missing open day and he'll be behind here in Sarasota at that time. Um, his uh, cardiac issues continue to uh, look like they're behind him, and um, you know we're going to stick with them, and, and uh, we'll get him past this. Thank you, Mike. Uh, with that, we will open it up to questions, beginning with Rock Kubako. Mike, how was he handling the situation, given that you know everything he went through to get back on the field and everything was so positive, and then it's a pretty bad uh, turn of luck there that something like this happens. I, I, amazingly, um, just as he has all along, um, you know, it's, it's really proven uh, the, the mental fortitude that we knew we had when we drafted them, but, uh, you know, really to, to basically sit uh, dormant for a year like he did uh, when he had to, and then build himself back into game shape, be out there getting base hits with his peers, and then have this happen. Um, it stinks, and, uh, but he's, he's taking it like he takes everything. Um, you know, these, these players are, are wired very differently mentally. And I mean that in a good way. They're, these guys are um, tough, the good ones. And uh, it's certainly uh, not how you would have scripted out his first couple of years of pro ball by any measure, but he's, um, he's I'm not worried about his uh, uh, mental ability to, to get over this latest hump. Next up is Rich Dubroff. A mic on Mancini and Means. Will will you consider negotiating further, or will they go straight to arbitration? Well, um, regarding the arbitration process in in general, um, it's very unusual that it is ongoing right now during um, spring training um, and on in, into the season with the hearings. Uh, this is a byproduct of the lockout and the delayed spring training. Um, we are file to go. Um, we have been, I believe, even before I got here and almost every club is now. Um, so we'll adhere to that. Um, you know, this uh, process is one that has existed for quite some time across baseball um, to uh, help determine the salary ranges of players in these classes of service. We do everything that we can to avoid going to these hearings. That's why we use the word avoid when, when we reach a settlement. Um, you know, the, no, nobody really wants to do that. Uh, but when you don't see eye to eye and you're at an impasse, that's the process that's set up. The, the Players Association has worked to uh, sustain this process, even in this last CBA. And, um, you know, sometimes you're just not able to get on the same page and you have to to use the system that has been set up, but it's not something that is um, isolated to just us or just one or two players. And it's not just about um, individual players. There's a systematic 
uh, link up of players across years affected by past players that will affect future players, affects other clubs. And um, we're constrained to work within those parameters as a club. Um, so we do everything that we can to avoid this, but um, it does happen. And we go through the hearing process when it does. But um, those guys and all these players, they, they, they bust their tails to get here. Um, they, they work their butts off. They want to maximize their years in the major leagues. They want to do as well for themselves and for their um, companions as major league players going forward as well as possible. Um, and you know, this is part of that when, um, when we're not able to uh, square up on what the proper comparisons within the class ranges are. And so we'll, we'll uh, proceed with the process. Nathan Ruiz. Mike, with those two guys, were, were the possibility of extensions or multi-year deals discussed at all? Um, you know, uh, given that we're in spring training and we all have so much going on, um, and, and now we have an ongoing um, salary determination process going on, I don't, I don't want to pollute the atmosphere with uh, information about negotiations. It's just not right right now in the middle of spring training. Uh, this is an unusual year, unusual setup. Um, so it's not something that I, I prefer to get into. And then just a, a quick follow-up. Systematically, do you know how their salary structure will work given that they don't have their salary determined as the season begins? Uh, not a exactly. I'm, I'm not uh, sure of the mechanics of that, but I know that there's a, a system in place that because it's, it's technically TBD and probably will be so on opening day, I'm sure there is some uh, payroll um, set up in, in advance that the league and the PA have agreed to, to, to square one up once those salaries get determined, but I don't know the mechanics of that myself. Zach Silver. Hey Mike, Brandon has said that Adley continues to progress well. Is that still the case? And has there been any determination of how this injury came about? Was it just wear and tear or was there maybe some point of inflection that caused it? Yeah, he is progressing well. Um, that's good. He um, he was really playing his ass off in the early camp. Um, so the timing of this stinks. Um, he was uh, doing it all. Um, and uh, the big leaguers were showing up and came in, kind of woke up one morning um, with some soreness in that triceps back of the arm region. And, um, you know, now we're in the process of letting that fully calm down and flush out before we put it back out there. But uh, obviously it's something that we're going to uh, be professional about doing the right thing and, and uh, pacing properly, but he is trending well, very hopeful that it's just a matter of time uh, before he's back out there, but it's not something that I, I or they want to get, I think too specific about um, at this point, other than, you know, I think it's more weeks than days still with, with regard to him joining game action. Dan Connolly. Mike, with regards to arbitration, specifically these two cases, how much do you reconcile your payroll with what numbers you guys put front for these guys? In other words, um, you, know, you have one of the lowest payrolls in, in the game. How much does that play in when you think about your best pitcher and your clubhouse leader? Or is it just a set, this is what it is against the, uh, you know, the rest of the comps? Yeah, I, look, I hate to talk uh, real wonky uh, about something as as mind numbing as as um, arbitration, but it, as I said, it's not about us. Um, this is a a league wide system that has been uh, kind of carefully manicured from both sides for decades, um, and the results of any one player um, will affect their peers that year, future peers. Um, and it's something that the PA and the league and the clubs take very seriously. And, I, you know, sometimes we really, especially this past year, really wish the business, big business element of Major League Baseball um, wasn't thrust into the forefront as often as it has been. But um, it's, it's the reality of it. And, um, you know, like I said, these guys um, are incredible athletes. They've been working very hard. Um, we don't fault their point of view, trying to make the case um, to make as much as they should make. Um, but this is a 
big dollar business, these um, decisions uh, writ large across all the players, across all the years, across all the clubs are meaningful. And, um, you know, we, we, uh, we do our tar- part to take it seriously, but we're very fair. We're very communicative. We're very forthright. Um, that's our approach. Um, but at times you just can't um, see eye to eye before these deadlines. Steve Molesky. Mike, the Orioles added some pitching. Lyles, you brought Ellis back, some others. Uh, despite that, do you have any concerns that rotation-wise, some young guys may be forced to cover innings sooner than you might want to? Yeah, I mean, we're we're um, you know we're not pitching rich going into this year, and now we have this short spring training um, in a 162-game season. It's certainly a concern. It's been a concern the past couple of years. We want to continue auditioning and grooming some of these young guys that are on the 40-man roster that have made their major league debut. We've got a couple other guys, two or three guys, newly added to the 40-man roster that I expect will make their major league debut this year. we got to be careful with their careers as well. Um, we see talent here, but there aren't um, the amount of proven commodities um, that provide length than, than we would like. So as we're uh, evaluating here in the early part of camp, you know, we've had a couple of solid starts and some rickety starts right out the gates. And it's just hard for me to sift through right now um, what was uh, somebody getting the rust off in their first time out versus something that we're going to have to chalk up um, to uh, an evaluation we're putting the team together or crafting the year. I think it's going to uh, work out over the next couple of weeks. Um, and some of these guys are going to get into the flow. Um, I think that um, Means and Lyles um, will provide some stability. I think Tyler Wells' ability to provide length. I thought we saw a nice glimpse of that the other day, and he has the pitch mix and the physicality to do so. And then, um, you know, we uh, have hopes that the, uh, Dean Kramer, Keegan Aiken, Bruce Zimmerman, Zach Lowther, Alex Wells, uh, there's more cohort, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll step in and slide in and provide some length for us as well. But, um, you know, we need our pitching to strengthen. Um, we're we're uh, going about it uh, the best way that we can. Um, and it's not something that happens overnight. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's something that we're having to navigate early in camp of getting guys ready, kind of uh, – giving them the slow play that they're accustomed to at the beginning part of camp, but looking at the calendar and going, you know, holy crap, we've got a major league game in 15 days. Um, so it's, it's tough, but um, I think we'll figure it out. Andy Koska, Baltimore Sun. Hey Mike, uh, just quickly following up about Adley. Uh, I know you don't want to get too specific on that timeline, but would you, would you say it's probably a safe bet? He's not available for the April five opening day for triple A or, or where do you kind of assume that? Um, I'm not ready to say that. Um, you know, he's just got some general soreness. Um, there's nothing structurally going on in his, his uh, back of the arm, tricep kind of region. And so if this dissipates rapidly, uh, we want him out there. You know, he's gotten kind of a spring training um, because he was here since early part of February. Obviously, he's not playing in front of the crowds and against the major league pitchers. Uh, but we'll take all that into account. It's very encouraging the way he was looking. I know he's really bummed that this happened literally right when the big leaguers were showing up, uh, but we're taking a long view with him, and I know he is too. He's a very smart, very disciplined guy. Mark Viviano. Hey, Mike. You've answered a couple questions about Mancini and Means, and because, I mean, they're accomplished players, somewhat veteran on a young roster, in speaking with both of them uh, this past week, they, they admit that they have an uncertain future uh, with the franchise. Is it your personal policy to communicate your plans for them or do you kind of just let these things play out? Yeah, I, I look, I try to talk to uh, these guys, especially our veterans, man to man as, as much as possible. Um, you know, the, the reality of my job is there's a lot that crosses my desk that doesn't lead anywhere that we have to investigate, we have to entertain, we have to look at. Um, we don't need that, all of that swirling around in uh, the internet or in the clubhouse. Um, so it's not you know, uh, something that you give the players a play by play on, but um, those guys in particular, I've had career conversations with them. We talk openly, I'm very 
um, respectful towards both of those guys um, in particular, have a, have a lot of admiration for what they've done in uh, their careers thus far and what they're going to do going forward. Um, but look, I'm put in a position where I've got to manage the long-term future of the club, make business decisions on behalf of the club. Um, you know, so there's some natural uh, times when, when you're at odds over things. But uh, my point of view is um, that's no reason to not be honest and uh, fair with, with guys and, and give them a sense of, of what's going on to whatever degree is responsible. We have time for a couple more questions. Uh, next up is Nathan Ruiz. Mike, back to Adley. You know, like you mentioned, he was playing well in the the minor league camp. He had, he had been at mini camps before that and, and done some instruction. Like, obviously, coming off a season where he played practically every day, and the hope was he would do that this upcoming season. I, I'm just curious what the organizational thinking is in terms of you know giving him as much baseball action as possible over the last few months, and and if there's any in hindsight any you know, changes you would have made to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, we I talked about with that with him, like you know whether we um, were were doing a little too much with this group, and he did not think so. Um, you know, he he did a lot last year uh, as well, and I just think it was um, you know bad timing. People get sore, um, and uh, the fact that it happened right at the beginning of spring training um, put us into a posture where um, you know we have a whole year in front of us that we don't want to uh, lose much, as much, we want to lose as little of that year as possible. Um, so now we've got to be smart on, on the front end. I think if it's something like this had happened in the middle of the season, um, maybe you would, you would take it a, a little differently, but um, he's a machine. I mean, he's an incredible athlete. Um, he's one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. Um, and um, he, you know, he, he knows how to, uh, he knows how to handle himself on a day-to-day -day basis by now as an athlete. So um, not the first or the last injury that, that he's going to have. And, um, you know, it'll, it'll be over here soon, but I, I'm hesitant to put dates on it right now, just being a soft tissue thing that they were taking somewhat day-to-day. -day. Dan Connolly. Mike, kind of to follow up on uh, Viv's question, you had said earlier that, or last week, that um, the trade discussions were almost like July, a uh, typical July right now, because there's been so much of, of talks and such. Um, that said, Trey Mancini's situation, he's your only player, your veteran player who is not, not under control going into next year. Um, what is the situation with him? What is the immediate future with him? Have the, uh, the talks for him trade-wise escalated? And what do you see? Is he going to be your opening day, you know, in your opening day lineup, as far as you know now? Thanks. I, I, I appreciate the uh, question. It's a valid one. Um, we are, as we always do, having ongoing, uh, whether light or heavy trade conversations about players on our roster. That's not exclusive to the Orioles by any stretch. Um, and that continues. Um, but given that we're now um, into the arbitration, I guess, uh, hearing window or process. Um, again, I, I don't want to um, sprinkle out any uh, info about uh, trade discussions or things like that. I mean, I've got the, the players are right here um, a few feet from me getting ready for the season. This is a very unusual circumstance that we're having sort of this style of off-season activity, both in the trade and salary negotiation front going on while we're getting ready for season in two weeks. And I just want to be careful about um, not uh, over um, uh, over publicizing front office activities, but it's safe to say we're doing we're doing our job. These guys understand that part of the business. Um, they're focused on helping us have a better season, having the best season personally that they can possibly have, uh, um, supporting their teammates, and uh, that's what they do. They're professional athletes, so we'll we'll, we'll see what happens. Our last question is from Jerry Coleman. Hey, Mike, uh, real quickly, I wanted to get a two part. Uh, first of all, reaction to the new rules that were just uh, formally announced by MLB, if you have any comment on that. And secondly, uh, last thing regarding Means and Mancini, is it kind of different with the Orioles than other organizations because of 
the way the team is in the rebuild and these guys are kind of faces in the clubhouse and leaders in the clubhouse with trying to make an impression on the younger guys. Um, the, the, uh, first of all, the rules question I saw, um, I mean, we haven't received anything like super official yet, but just everything that, uh, I'm seeing publicly, it seems like we're going to have some, uh, laxity, um, for the rosters. And I don't think there's a baseball operations person or coach in or player in the country that doesn't want to see that. So that, that sounds good. Um, given that this is just another weird year. Um, and, but I'll, I'll wait and look look and see uh, what else um, comes out on an official basis from the league before commenting. Um, and then, um, yeah, I, look, I'm not blind uh, to the fact that, um, you know, uh, some of our veteran leaders happen to be guys that are in their arbitration track right now. And that a lot of that's by virtue of how few uh, uh, true free agents we have on the roster right now. I mean, it's, it's really, Torinos and Odor and Jordan Lyles that are sort of graduated beyond their RB years and have arrived here via free agency. And that's um, a low number um, because of where our organization continues to be. But, um, and so that puts a lot of our young arbitration track guys at the forefront in terms of talent and in terms of leadership in the clubhouse. And um, yeah, I guess that makes for somewhat of a, of a unique dynamic um, with, with our team. But uh, like these players, um, they uh, aspire to reach these arbitration years. And it's very important to them individually and as a collective. And, um, you know, I, they, 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 you know, I think the younger guys want to be in those shoes one, one day too. And we'll, um, you know, continue to approach that process as, as responsibly as, as we always do.